Hi, board members. I am Alicia Strobel, the president of Strobel Consulting. We were the contractor chosen to help with the three-year graduation pathway options survey project, and this is year three of the project. Today, we'll be talking about the results from this year's surveys, focus groups, and stakeholder interviews. Um, please keep in mind, it will be a very brief snapshot of the findings. It's quite a large report, as it will include um, key findings and lessons learned from all three years, so that that's there in summary. Um, and there's just a lot of information and things we could talk about. So please know this is just a very short presentation, a small snapshot, and of course, you know, we can delve more into it next week. Um, I hope that as you leave this presentation, you do have a sort of a quick overview of the information that will be presented in the report, that you have an understanding just a little bit of the methodology, our sample this year, those related demographics, and then a very brief overview of some of the findings I thought you might find interesting. Um, I'd also very much like for you to have the opportunity to ask questions and engage next week when we meet. And I encourage all of you, as you're thinking about, you know, the report and just what's here in the presentation, um, or if there's things you want me to speak towards, if you email me in advance, um, that'll just help me kind of know, you know, what you what you guys want to focus on. All right. So the research questions have not changed over the three years. So I'll leave this here. And of course you can look at it on your own time. Um, we've tried to build on layers within these questions um, and sort of dig deeper each year while still answering these. So quick overview of the methodology. We did start year three in February and we'll conclude by October. We did collect stakeholder feedback from educators, parents, community members, recent high school graduates and high school students by inviting them to participate in our online survey, which we called the stakeholder survey. We also had district and school uh, administrators and personnel who were invited to participate on the district follow-up survey. That survey we've, as part of the project was required that we do that each of the three years. Um, and then we also had school uh, admin and personnel that we gathered feedback via focus groups. Um, and this year we really sort of looked at how the graduation pathway options, um, you know, related with the high school and beyond plan and profile of a graduate. So that's where we dug a little deeper this year. We also did interviews with industry stakeholders and talked with folks from businesses representing various industries um, from a cross-section of locations in Washington. Um, and we talked in the interviews. Um, these were, you know, brief. We didn't want to keep people on the phone or Zoom too long, but just asking them about desirable post-high school skills and employability expectations. We did have a total of 868 stakeholders um, complete the stakeholder survey, which was fantastic. Only 25 district and school admin personnel completed the district survey, and that's kind of one of the findings we'll talk about. People were not as engaged with that, um, you know, and there could be different reasons for that. We had 11 educators participate in focus groups. We offered them at four different times. We had 14 people sign up, and ultimately only 11 showed. We also offered for student focus groups. We had some educators that signed up to do that and they ultimately, none of them participated. So participation levels this year for educators just did not seem as robust. Um, and then we had 18 businesses participate in our one-on-one -on -one interviews via Zoom or phone. So quick summary of what we collected for quantitative data. We had the school district follow-up survey. We also had the stakeholder survey. And then for qualitative data, we had the stakeholder focus groups, the industry stakeholder interviews, and then of course our open-ended survey data. Um, and you'll see my little note down here. Again, educators were invited to host student focus groups. We reached out to anyone who completed a survey. We just did not have educators who wanted to take advantage of that opportunity. And the few that did ended up canceling prior to the date they had selected. Um, and you'll see that's one of our kind of lessons learned is there, as a follow-up researcher, you know, just deeper looking, it would probably be wise to focus just on a student portion. Um, all right, stakeholder survey sample characteristics. So 
This is just on the um, the stakeholder survey. So that's what we're going to focus on today because that's sort of where the most interesting data is. So we had 305 educators, 314 parents or guardians. Um, we had 159 community members, 64 high school students, and then 26 recent high school graduates. Recent high school graduates, um, they're a very hard population to get a hold of. And, you know, as we let the team know when this became part of the plan for this year, we don't have access to those contacts. So the SVE team did a great job. Um, and 26 is pretty good. So a total of 868. Um, as you can see on here, the majority of our respondents were parents or guardians, making up 36% of our total sample. So we like that. We also had quite a few people who were part of memberships or associations. And you can just see here on this list, um, our largest number came from the Association of Washington School Principals. Um, the CT General Advisory Council was next, but we had quite, um, you know, some Washington, some WACD, some WASA. So that was pretty neat to see. All right, demographics on the stakeholder survey. Um, you could, we already saw the mix of educators and that. We had more females than we do males, which is pretty typical. Um, and then on our demographic targets, we exceeded absolutely every single one of them across all the race and ethnicity categories. So we like that too. All right, let's talk a little bit about the focus groups. So our Zoom focus groups took place in June. Um, as I already indicated, school and district staff and students were invited to participate. I think the important thing here is the topics that we covered. That is what improvements could be made to the high school and beyond plan, um, just to make it a better tool for students to make decisions about um, courses, graduation pathway options, and then other academic and career sort of learning activities to help plan futures beyond high school. We also talked about the alignment of the pathways to profile of a graduate and the relevancy of the current pathways and then feedback on how to make them more relevant. We have some great quotes from that, um, which you'll see in the report. So we've already talked about who showed up. So that's that. All right, industry stakeholder interviews. This was a new form of data collection we did this year and these took place June through August. They targeted various business owners managers, human resources managers. We really did a great mix and you'll see this again in the report in more detail of really tiny businesses to big corporations to middle of the road all around the state, different areas, different types of businesses. And the majority of what we talked about there were the types of skills and knowledge that as employers they find desirable. Also skills and knowledge that they feel are lacking in the current workforce. So over 110 businesses in the state that we reached out to and the industries included retail, hospitality, aerospace, um, construction and trades, fishing, agricultural. We had manufacturing, health technology, um, tribal business. So of those 20 agreed to participate in the in interviews either by phone or Zoom. Um, a couple people did not follow through on the interview. Um, and we really just tried to keep it diverse. So I think you'll see see that in there. The one thing I would note, we really wanted to get aerospace and we actually had help from some of your um, board connections. That industry was just really hard. They were, for lack of a better word, kind of secretive. So we reached out to 19 companies. Um, we contacted them via both email and phone. And then we reached out to the contacts we had been given through board members and Nobody was willing to do an interview about aerospace. So, all right, let's look at a snapshot of some of our survey findings. All right, under relevancy of pathways, when it comes to succeeding in the 21st century workforce, how important are the following skills and attributes? So we had 20 skills that were listed and these four here are where more than 90% of respondents indicated that these skills were very imp were important to very important. So you have communication skills, problem solving, and ability to collaborate, and critical thinking. So when we think of those in terms of the graduation pathway options, I think it's very interesting. So when we look at those same 20 skills, 
less than 30% of respondents found these important. So we took, we're looking at right now the top four and the bottom four. The bottom four were foreign language, two-year degree, four-year degree, and test taking. So again, kind of interesting as we think about the makeup of the, the graduation pathway options. All right, changes to pathways. Do you have suggestions for changing or adding existing graduation pathway options? This was an open-ended question. So the way we analyze this is we go through and we categorize sort of what the comments are about. And then we can look at how many people are saying stuff under these same categories. Um, do note individual responses may have covered more than one category. Um, so you can see at the top, the more than 50% of people who took the time to make a comment or 56 people to, to made a comment, wanted to focus on real world skills, not college readiness, um, followed by more options, equity for special populations, removing standardized testing, um, more pathway information, flexibility for CTE. So I think, again, these this is, you know, findings we've seen across the two years. So is it surprising? No, but I think it's important when we see people taking the time to say, hey, this is important to me. All right. Should Washington students be provided with more or less of the following learning opportunities? Again, 80% 80, 80 think that Washington students should get more direct learning experiences that connect them to work. 77% want opportunities for students to work on real world problems. 76% uh, or learning and practicing employability skills. I mean, you're still at over 50% supporting students and pursuing their own interests, inter interdisciplinary, multi-subject area learning. So again, this is important when we think about, okay, are the graduation pathway options providing what are being identified as important learning opportunities? Um, so we had screeners for many of our questions. So for survey respondents who indicated that they were familiar with the graduation pathway options, so that was 554 of our total respondents were asked this question, are current graduation pathway options relevant to all students? So you can see more than 50%, just barely more than 50% said no, they're not relevant to all students. So again, on that, you know, we're touching on an equity, an equity issue there. It is interesting as you go down, you know, you're getting, you're get those lower, the lower counts, but the high school students taking this and the, the recent grads, um, they were more inclined to say that they were relevant. So that's kind of an interesting finding too. Um, so there's that. All right. Significant. Oh, this one's interesting too, because there were statistically significant differences um, when it came to gender. So as you can see, males were more likely to indicate that pathways are relevant to all students um, than their female counterparts were. So that is also an area where in future work, you know, you, if you're looking at that, you may want to delve into that. Right. It's kind of an it's interesting. So um, on an open ended follow up question, we also asked how the current graduation pathway options could be more relevant for all students. So options for special education, IEP, EL, unconventional students, again, equity right there at the top. Um, the options for special education, though, you're you know, you're getting that it's a pretty significantly higher count than the bottom of the list. Um, and so you can see equity for schools, again, flexibility for CTE. So we're, we're hearing a lot of the same things over and over um, in the data. All right. So I told you that would be very brief because I said I'd keep it to 10 minutes. And of course, we're over. So we can go more into that. And there will be so much information in the report. Um, next steps. So we're just doing the last of the qualitative data is getting analyzed and we're compiling the quotes. Um, we're going to add in all the final graphs this week, and then a draft of the final report will be provided to the SBE team uh, by September 15th, and then the team will provide feedback and edits, and we'll get everything finalized by September 30th. So to note, the final report, as I said earlier, it will include the key findings and lessons learned from all three years of the project. Um, and you'll see us, you know, refer back to it because it is you know, we have the longitudinal data, so that's important. 
Um, so the report will be big. You'll, there'll be lots in there. Um, questions and discussion. I look very much forward to chatting with all of you next week. As I said before, I really encourage you to let me know what kind of information you'd like to talk about next week. Um, you know, obviously we can't cover all of it. So if there are questions you have or things you want to see more of, or you want more quotes, let me know and we'll get that done. All right. Until then, thank you all. And it's been a great pleasure working with you on this project.